so first of all i'm having this video right here on the steps because it's quite hot in my room like um the sun really sets a bit around uh, eight nine ten here so at this point it is like a right directly into my room so it'll be too hot and comf and uncomfortable for me to film there and i ha don't have the um, equipment and the lighting for me to film like when it's now dark I, I really need to make use of the natural light so i apologize for that and because of that you might hear a bit of more sound and noise in the background and uh yeah i apologize for that as well so guys let's start with talking about financial accounting and reporting <music> Hello guys, my name is Rino and welcome to my channel. Now if you are new, welcome and I hope that you stay and you subscribe and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. So today we are going to talk about financial accounting, financial reporting, FINAC, you know, it just depends with your university. Before we get into it, I just want to thank you all who have subscribed to my channel. I finally reached um, 500 subscribers, which is a big a milestone for me. And I would especially want to thank and shout out to Tariro, whose um, interview uh, I uploaded this past week has managed to push my uh, views, has managed to push my um, audience, has managed to push my subscribers. So yeah, guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Tari. And uh, thank you to everyone who is here supporting, watching, and making sure that you know my content can um, get to more people and a lot of people can be helped and can be assisted. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is knowledge of the standard. The very first thing that you will need to be able to do when you're answering a FINAC question is to know which standards to apply. There is that risk that you're going to apply IFRS 16 to an IFRS um, 15 question. There's risk that you don't know where, where uh, you know, the definition of uh, a financial asset in IFRS 9 is. And the only remedy for that is being comfortable with the standard. When you face a challenge, make it a habit that even if you go to the solution, you also go to the standard. So yeah, guys, I think what I can just say is the standard is where all problems are solved. Less errors are made, all uh, key things are identified and where you can improve your discursive questions. The next um, thing is that it is also linked to your knowledge of the standard and it speaks to finding the catch in each standard. So if you're going to do your CTA or your ITC the way I did mine, it was like um, practicing maybe st uh, by standard by standard, right? Because that's how most questions are structured. You need to identify for which standard what is the the complexity in it and make sure that you know it so for example if in fs 15 you find that for you the complexity is um issue of variable consideration you need to master that if you find that uh in is 28 what is difficult is um consolidation journals you need to do that if you find that in is 21 the fctr is the difficult thing then you need to make sure that you actually put effort in those areas that are complex because that's where the exam comes from if it comes to uh if you're 16 there's also issue of maybe variable list payment something like that then look at those areas that you really know that they are challenging because those are the areas that will be examined like I, I, knowing that it's a challenging course and it's an issue of being competent it's sometimes it doesn't make sense maybe for like examiners to 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 to, to, to uh um you know question on things that are probably quite simple so it's those complex elements where you can truly shine so i would advise that you go to, for all the standards maybe if you can actually list down what you think is the catch for each standard and then go through everything 
that you feel like is the catch go through everything that you feel like is complex about the standard go through everything because for each standard there's something that you know that yeah, this is complex i'm not saying that don't look at everything else but i would think that you'll be comfortable with everything else the next step is that um i recommend that you practice i think in every video that i do when i'm uh, giving advice for cta i always talk about practicing and this is even more crucial for financial accounting in practicing you can actually uh, feel more confident in how you answer questions one two you can um, also look at how various like the various ways which standards can be examined and you can also um, work on your exam technique so when you practice um, remember what I've just talked about what complexities in a standard when you practice you learn how to get all those easy marks they are not easy because they don't just give you for free i want to challenge you to do if you're doing your cta to do at least five questions for each standard before you write your final exam list down your standards from if it's three if it's 16. go on to the is is1 to is40 whichever ones are in syllabus and sort of like have a chart ticking that you've done three questions for these this is sort of just helps you with accountability making sure that you've practiced so yeah um the final things that i'm going to talk about are a fail a, a not failing approach a fail safe approach um it's Okay, I don't like putting fail in, in the name, but essentially it's making sure that whatever you do, you do not fail. You need to assess how best you can scoop marks and uh, based on the knowledge that you already have. So if you've written some tests already, like what I said in the previous video of how to push or improve your marks, I advise that you do some introspection look at what you've done so far and see how best that you can improve and on that uh, my final uh, remark would be that when in doubt consult your lecturers and your tutors most the most challenging thing um, that can happen to you or to a tutor is for you to go there and you don't really know what your problem is or to go and say that I have challenges with if it's nine put the work so that when you go you're going to say that i have done this question i'm supposed to calculate effective interest rate however i'm failing to calculate it and once they tell you you're never going to forget that when you're calculating effective interest rate uh, for amortized uh, financial assets holds it amortized cost you're going to use the net amount if the amount is credit impaired because you went with the direct question so guys um, thank you so much for watching. Continue working hard and you're successful in your city and in your ITC. Uh, very soon I'm going to do a video for ITC. I know I haven't done one for it, but I'm going to do it uh, very soon. And we, yeah, I'll continue, you know, with this content. So guys, thank you so much. Until next time. Bye. I sort of kind of like this uh, stairs studio, <laughs> it's quite comfy.